what is vasculitis students vascule means a vessel and itis means inflammation right you all know what is uh, itis anywhere it means inflammation so what is vasculitis students it is inflammation of the vessel wall right the vessel wall becomes inflamed correct now a very popular thing in vasculitis is this chapel hill classification this is called as a chapel hill classification which says that vasculitis is basically of three types large vessel vasculitis predominantly medium vessel vasculitis and predominantly small vessel vasculitis now which vasculitis are predominantly large vessels right in that you have to remember the two t's takayasu and the other t is for temporal temporal arteritis is also called as giant cell arteritis right so two t's for large vessel temporal arteritis and takayasu arteritis when we talk about medium vessel we have three entities polyarteritis nodosa kawasaki disease and bojer's disease now the small vessel vasculitis for the students is divided into two categories either it is immune complex mediated or it is posse immune now posse immune means this vasculitis is basically anca mediated right what is anca we will do in some time immune complex mediated vasculitis are hinox conlin purpura sle good pasteur syndrome while the posse immune vasculitis are wegner's granulomatosis microscopic polyangiitis and chirk strauss syndrome along with another syndrome students that is bechet syndrome correct now this classification is extremely important for all mcq exams because in the mcq exam they ask you a question which of the following is not a medium vessel vasculitis or is a large vessel vasculitis or there can be a question like um, which of the following statement is not true for pan and one option is it is a large vessel vasculitis right so you need to know this classification in detail correct now before i move to the details of each of them individually i want to tell you about one topic which is very important from vasculitis which is called as anca what is the full form of anca it means anti neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody anti neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody what do you mean by that you all know that neutrophils have got a lot of these granules right so these antibodies are against the granules of the neutrophils right now broadly speaking this anca is of two types one is called as p anca another is called as c anca the other name for p anca is anti mpo anca what is mpo myeloperoxidase and the other name for c anca is anti pr3 anca pr3 means proteinase 3 now what do you mean by that p anca is anti mpo anca means these antibodies are against the myeloperoxidase granules of the neutrophils and anti pr3 anca means these antibodies are against the proteinase 3 granules of the neutrophils understood now why do we call them p anca or c anca because when you do immunofluorescence to see these ancas if the staining is in the perinuclear location p means perinuclear if the perinuclear region is stained i call it as p anca and if the cytoplasm is stained i call it as c anca very very important point right now the point which you have to take home from anca students is that which vasculitis are p anca positive and which vasculitis are c anca positive that is a very very important point right so which vasculitis are p anca positive remember two entities students this is an mcq one is microscopic polyangiitis microscopic polyangiitis and another is chirk strauss syndrome microscopic polyangiitis and chirk strauss syndrome these two entities are p anca positive whereas the vasculitis which is c anca positive is wegner's granulomatosis wegner's granulo 
mitosis. Correct? Easy story, students. How do I uh, remember this uh, so that I don't get confused? Uh, I have remembered this uh, C anka thing by the mnemonic World Cup. World Cup. Okay. So W for Wegner's, C for C anka. So Wegner is a C anka positive. That is why the other thing, other two entities, microscopic and Churkstraus, they are P anka positive. Right. Now let me show you a picture so that you easily know what we are talking about. This is anka staining students. In this image, can you people beautifully see this perinuclear region being uh, stained? So this is P anka and here you can see diffuse cytoplasmic staining. So this is C anka. These are the two types of ankas. Easy, right? How do you see anka students? We see them by immunofluorescence testing. Correct? Is anka very specific? No. Remember, anka can also be positive. You can write down this line. Anka can also be positive. In other autoimmune disorders, in other autoimmune disorders, autoimmune disorders like SLE or ulcerative colitis or primary sclerosing cholangitis, etc. Understood? So, they can also be positive in other disorders like SLE, ulcerative colitis or primary sclerosing cholangitis. Please remember that, right? So, the positivity of ANCA can be given as a keyword in a clinical pathologic MCQ. You can be given an MCQ with a clinical history and in the last line, the examiner can say that the patient uh, is P ANCA positive or C ANCA positive. So, that will make you reach the diagnosis quickly. Understood, students? With this topic, students, let us now understand the pathogenesis of vasculitis. Pathogenesis. So, they say it is of two types. They can be either infectious cause, maybe some viruses like rickettsia, or it can be a non-infectious cause. So, these non-infectious causes, students, are mostly the immune causes, right? And what are the immune causes am I talking about? It can be ANCA mediated, right? It can be a hypersensitivity reaction. So, it is usually immune complex mediated. Immune complex mediated, right? Then what else can be seen, students? It can be T cell mediated or anti endothelial cell antibody mediated endothelial cell antibody mediated understood easy not much importance right with this basic knowledge now let us move to the first type of vasculitis students that is giant cell arteritis giant cell arteritis I have not seen a single patient of giant cell arthritis in my practice in Sabdajung Hospital. But the, all the points which I am going to tell you now can be a exam question, right? The first point, it is also known as temporal arthritis, right? Two T's I have already told you. What kind of vasculitis is this? This is a Large vessel vasculitis, right? Remember, whenever you see a patient of giant cell arthritis, the patient's age has to be more than 50 years. It is the most common vasculitis in elderly. It is the most common vasculitis in adults or elderly. If that question is asked, the answer is going to be giant cell. If the patient's age is less than 50 years, you do not make a diagnosis of giant cell arthritis. Simple story. Correct? Next point. It is called as temporal arthritis. That means which is the most common vessel affected students? It is the temporal artery. This is the temporal artery. It goes like this. So the most common vessel which is affected that is the superficial temporal artery. It is the superficial temporal artery. Understood? Do you know of any other vessels which are affected? Can also affect the ophthalmic artery or vertebral arteries, right? The other vessels can also be affected. Understood? Now, 
Tell me, students, where does temporal artery run? I just showed you. How does it go? It goes like this over your temple area. That is why what is the clinical feature, the symptom with which the patient will present to you? The patient will have headache. So the important symptom is headache, which is usually localized, right? So we have a localized headache. This is the most common symptom of temporal arthritis. Understood? The second symptom, which is the most specific symptom of uh, giant cell arthritis, which is the most specific symptom? The answer is going to be jaw claudication. Jaw claudication is the most specific symptom of temporal arthritis. What is jaw claudication? There is pain in the jaw when the patient opens the jaw, right? The other non-specific symptoms can be fever or weight loss. These will be present in all different kinds of vasculitis, right? This is one type of vasculitis which can present with polymyalgia rheumatica, right? So, polymyalgia rheumatica can be associated. Understood? Correct? Next point, students. When you do the lab investigations, a very important thing I see is increased ESR. Now, ESR students has increased in any of the chronic inflammatory disorders. So, it will increase in all types of vasculitis. But it is one of the very important feature of giant cell arthritis, right? Then if I ask you, what is the investigation of choice? What will you do? What is the investigation of choice? Again, a MCQ. That is the arterial biopsy, the vessel wall biopsy. Biopsy of the involved vessel is the investigation of choice, right? And normally students, it is seen that the lesion is very, very focal. That is why we have to sample approximately 3 to 5 centimeter of the vessel wall, right? Minimum 3 to 5 centimeters of vessel wall is taken. Very important point. Correct? Then I directly come to my point students that is the microscopy. The biopsy has come to you now. The clinician has done the biopsy. What will I see? Very easy students. I have told you it is called as giant cell arthritis. That means what will be present? Giant cells. Now where do you normally see the giant cells? I see it in a granuloma. Right. So, one thing which I see is granulomatous inflammation. Granulomatous inflammation along with the presence of giant cells. Easy. Now, why is a granuloma formed? Because of which types of lymphocytes? CD4 plus T cells, right? So, that is why there is an infiltration of CD4 plus T lymphocytes. Easy? If you correlate everything, it will be very, very simple, right? Then lastly, students, another very important feature is the fragmentation of internal elastic lamina. Now, you have a vessel wall, you know there is internal elastic lamina, there is external elastic lamina. When I see the internal elastic lamina, it is fragmented or broken, something like this. So, fragmentation of internal elastic lamina is seen in which type of vasculitis? Answer is giant cell arthritis. The question which can be asked now is, how do you see the fragmentation of elastic lamina? That is, which is the stain which you do? The answer is, what is the stain for elastic fiber students? Warhoff van Giesen, right? So, this is best seen on VVG stain. Warhoff van Giesen stain. Understood? Very, very important point. All these microscopic points are exam questions. Let us see the images so that you do not forget it. See the microscopy of giant cell. This is a blood vessel lumen, right? And here, can you people appreciate... In this blood vessel, these things which are there, these are actually the giant cells which are there. And uh, in this image, can you see these structures which are there? 
These are all the joint cells which are present. Correct? This is the blood vessel lumen which is there. Then, in this image, you can beautifully see this lamina which is fragmented from here. So, I can see fragmentation of internal elastic lamina on Warhoff von Giesen or Van Giesen stain. It shows a black color. Correct? Easy story, students. How will you treat this patient? I will either give steroids or immunosuppressive drugs, right? Now, let's quickly revise joint cell arthritis. Age more than 50 years, most common vessel affected superior, superficial temporal artery, most specific symptom, jaw claudication, most common symptom, localized headache. Biopsy will show giant cells along with granulomas and fragmentation of internal elastic lamina. If the ophthalmic artery is also involved in severe cases, the patient can also end up with blindness can also present with polymyalgia rheumatica clear next type of vasculitis is called as takayasu arthritis takayasu arthritis this is also a giant cell arthritis students we've already done it in the chapel and nomenclature right now the first point is it is also known as pulseless disease such a different name students pulseless does the patient have a pulse in this disease? Yes, the patient definitely has a pulse, but that is diminished, right? But then also it is called as pulseless disease. The point which you need to know is that age less than 50 years. Very important point, students. Harrison states that Takayasu arthritis patient is very similar to giant cell arthritis patient. A very important criteria for us to differentiate both these is the age of the patient. If the age is more than 50 years, think about giant cell. If the age is less than 50 years, you have to think about Takayasu arthritis. Understood? Then, what is the most common vessel affected? The most common vessel which is affected is the subclavian artery. Actually, they say iota and its branches are involved. That is why it is also known as iotic arch syndrome. Also known as iotic arch syndrome. Subclavian artery is the most common vessel affected. The least common vessel which is affected is the coronary artery. It is the coronary artery. Please remember, right? Now, what will you uh, see in the patient clinically? How will the patient present? It is called as pulseless disease. So, one important thing is reduced pulse in the upper extremities, right? Reduced pulse in the upper extremity. Understood? And the second is asymmetry in BP. So, these clinical features will also help you to differentiate it from giant cell arthritis. Because when you do biopsy in this case, students, you will get similar things. I will get granulomatous inflammation along with the presence of giant cells. That means on biopsy, I can't actually differentiate giant cell arthritis from Takayasu arthritis. So, two important things are the age and the clinical features which you will keep in your mind. Clear? Clear?